Mtali Bonani. This is the Naked Truth Show, Ikama Ngubeki. And this is a show where we discuss all things to do with sex, sexuality, and health. We are here to challenge and break social norms about sex, baby. We are talking all of this tonight. We're doing it. So if I were you, I would just like sit down because we're talking about women and their reproductive health. You know those things that we do to our bodies and we think we're doing well, and then we end up getting sick and then we've got all those ailments that irk our bodies. I'm talking all things to do with the cervix, all things to do with ovaries, your breasts, your back, everything that helps you to enjoy sex a little bit more. We're going, to, we're going to cover the causes, the effects, and also the treatments of these things that bother us. Like always, I'm not doing all the talking. I have a guest with me and in studio is Dr. Jeannie Eilif, who has been a gynecologist for as long as you can imagine. Dr. Jeannie, welcome to the Naked Truth Show. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming through to share your, your experiences and, you know, information with us. So uh, to kick off, we're talking about the reproductive health system, um, health system, system, yeah? Could be. Could yeah. be, yes. Yeah. Of the woman, of the female anatomy, because we do certain things to ourselves and we think, you know, we're doing good, we know what we're doing, and then we end up falling sick, and then there's an itch here, it burns here, and oh, I'm not feeling so well. So mm -hmm. I'll give you a quick story. I was one of those girls who thought I knew how to bath, especially mm -hmm. like my vagina. Oh no, I would be sticking fingers in there, and I'll be doing soaps and all of that until one day I had an itch I could not scratch, and. Mm -hmm went to the doctor and I was told, you are bathing wrong. Is there such a thing as bathing wrong? Well, there's a, a balance of organisms in the vagina. They're supposed to be there. Okay. A normal balance of organisms. If you use an antiseptic or if you take an antibiotic mm -hmm. or if you have too much sugar in your diet, you throw that balance out and then you get candida thrush Oof, which it is like hell like just the thought of it I'm just like yeah. and, it, and it, it will only itch when there were people around hey not oh. when I was by myself no it would wait like okay <gasps> two three people and then I'll start itching and then I'll just see me doing a little mm. dance on the chair because it itched so bad so Shame. what's the correct way of you know cleaning the vagina um Clean water, really. Just plain water. water yeah. And if I'm sexually active? Because the sperm has to come out from somewhere. It will come out in its own time. You can you can wash the vagina a bit, but don't go overboard like with overboard. it. Overboard. Yeah, you know, those as I say, those organisms that are in there mm -hmm. belong there. That's their home. All right. <laughs> in your practice, what are some of the cases that you have dealt with? Um, with women, obviously you have dealt a lot, but mm. what, what are some of the major cases that you feel women are overlooking this and they need to be educated uh, about these diseases and infections? I think overconsumption of sugar is a, a, a big problem. And it, as I said, it leads to thrush, but it, it has other consequences as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think it, it pushes people who have a tendency of polycystic ovarian syndrome that way. And it also helps promote cancer. And mm. yet we are in a culture that um, pushes sugar at us in cool drinks, in biscuits and cakes, in tea and coffee, everywhere. Mm -hmm. So it's um, counterintuitive to learn to, s to say, I'm going to cut my sugar back and how do I do it? Um, yeah. So do you then give them like a diet plan? Is, is it a, a diet plan that's then given? I, I'm not a great one for lists and pieces of paper <laughs> and all of that. I right. prefer just to talk. Right. Um, and women who are pregnant also have to reduce their sugar. And so if I see a woman who um, had a, a big, big baby last time, you know, four kgs, four and a half kgs, and they had a Caesar or they nearly had a Caesar, I say, you've got to cut your sugar right back this time mm -hmm. because the sugar pushes the weight of the baby up and not in a healthy way. Oh my goodness. And you're saying that the, the sugar intake then affects 
our bodies and then that's how we get certain cancers, polycystic, ovarian? Well, it, it um, cancer loves sugar. So early cancers are encouraged by sugar. Thank goodness, and I love my sugar. Yeah, <laughs> most people do. All right, and then now in terms of uh, dealing with these cancers, we're talking about um, ovarian cancer. Yeah. How is it best to deal with it so that um, I don't find sex painful for me? Because if I have the ovarian cancer, does it mean I have to cancel out sex totally? Or if I've got any of these infections, does it mean I have to cut out sex totally? No, so ovarian cancer and other things that cause discomfort are different. Mm -hmm. So ovarian cancer, um, ha there's a full range of fairly benign to quite nasty cancer. So the first thing is to find out what is it that you have. Mm -hmm. um, so usually in order to do that, we need to take a piece of the tissue, which means either doing what's called a laparoscopy, which mm -hmm. is keyhole surgery, or doing a cut and going in and taking all of the ovary or some of the ovary, depending. You know, there's very different situations. Okay. Um, and what I would just like to say is that I think it's really important that a woman understands the issues before I embark on any surgery. She needs to understand why I'm going to do it, mm -hmm. what I'm going to do if I in the middle of the operation think, oh, this is worse than I thought. Yes. Um, or what I'm going to do if I think, oh, no, this is fine. Um, so that when she wakes up and I say, you know, I did more than I said I was going to do, or I, in fact, didn't have to do what I said I was going to do, then she doesn't feel betrayed, mm -hmm. you know, that we have a partnership. Oh, um, right, I, 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 I get. Yeah. Let's talk in um, terms of um, issues that affect women's health too, in terms of um, unwanted pregnancies. Now I've, I've mm. discovered I'm pregnant mm. and I want to have an abortion, but um, I don't know where to go and have a safe abortion. And then I go, you know, at the room court or back door missions. Mm -mm. Uh, there's an auntie somewhere there who's going to help me to get yeah. this abortion. What are the the disadvantages or the risks of unsafe abortions because yeah. we know there's a safer way of doing it yeah. but unsafe abortions which are really high yeah unsafe abortions unfortunately are very common mm -hmm. and as gynecologists we see far too many mostly very young women who've had an unsafe abortion and then they get really sick and they come into the hospital and some of them are close to death and others we can help. But um, unsafe abortion is, yeah, it's a horrible, horrible thing. And um, it's one of the reasons why I think we may get a change in the abortion law. So All as right. you probably know, abortion is not legal in Zimbabwe mm -hmm. except for four um, situations. One, after rape two, in order to save the life of the mother. Okay. Three, when we know that the baby has an abnormality which is either going to make the baby not live or have a very difficult life. Difficult life, right. And um, fourth is incest, which is really a form of rape. Mm -hmm. um, but those are quite restrictive. So a situation where somebody falls pregnant because the condom fell off or um, actually forgot a pill that night or he had diarrhea and the pill didn't work. Mm -hmm. Those are not covered. And um, so within Zimbabwean law, you cannot have an abortion in Zimbabwe. Right. Now, people do get abortions in Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. but if you can afford it, um, I basically would recommend that in that situation, a Zimbabwean woman goes to South Africa, where, where the they actually abortion allow law the is, is much more open, right. and have a safe abortion there.
So how many cases do you get of girls or young women who have come to the, to the clinic and I've had an abortion, it wasn't safe, I feel like I'm dying? So you mean adult rape clinic? Yes. Um, those acute cases, we get some, but most of them will go to casualty. And mm -hmm. then we'll be asked to come in a bit later when the emergency has been dealt with. Mm -hmm because now she says, well, actually I was raped. So then, that, then this is the rape clinic's territory. So in terms of unwanted pregnancy, that's not a service we provide except for rape cases. E except for rape cases. So for rape cases where somebody was raped last night or you know, a couple of days ago, um, we will try and prevent the pregnancy mm -hmm. by giving um, uh, emergency contraception. All right. But sometimes we don't do it early enough and the pregnancy happens. And then we will try and identify it early. We will do organize a scan so that we can show the courts that this, the timing of this pregnancy does fit with the story of rape and um, then we will we, we have to get a court order so we write a letter to the magistrate saying this is the story she was raped on such and such a day and she's now pregnant and we have a scan which shows that this is so there's like a whole clear path process yes. in, yeah. in dealing with and that's with not the end of it it's, it's in, it, in, yeah i know it can be tiresome um doc we, we're going to take a quick break and then when yeah. we come back we're going to talk a lot more about the contraceptives that are open uh for women to use that are also good for their bodies they're not going to shift the hormonal okay imbalances so when we come back this is what we are going to be discussing stay tuned A lot can be covered when it comes to the woman and her womanhood and her reproductive health and the reproductive system. One of the things that we struggle with as women are getting contraceptives and the correct one that won't make my hormones go crazy. One month I am 58 kgs and then the other month I'm 72 kgs and I can't lift my legs because I'm too heavy. The contraceptive that made me bloated, I'm, I'm heavy and I'm miserable. What are some of the best contraceptives that, that are non-hormonal okay. and won't adjust my hormones because I don't want to gain weight, Doc. I want to <laughs> remain portable. Slim. Yes, slim and slender. Well, I, I don't think there's a one size fit, fits all. Okay. Yeah. You know, I think each woman has to figure out what works best for her. Mm -hmm. And if one woman finds she puts on weight when she's on the hormonal contraceptives, then that's, she can try different ones, but it probably won't make a lot of difference. Mm -hmm. So then, apart from the hormonal contraceptives, which can be pills or injections, um, then we're looking at barrier methods, mm -hmm. which are condoms and female condoms. And we're looking at intrauterine contraceptive devices, coils, um, yeah. IUCDs. Now, um, each of those suits some people and not others. Yes, I know I can't use, um, I think it's the loop. Mm -hmm. I can't use that because of the copper on it. Okay, so some people like. get unbearably heavy periods with a loop. So then it doesn't work for them. For mm -hmm. other people, it just really works nicely. So I think, you know, it's, it's a personal experimentation, really. Mm -hmm. And then barrier methods, again, some couples are good with mm -hmm. barrier methods and others, blah, yes. don't want it. Like, I, I don't want to use it, take yeah. it away. Yes. Yeah. But th isn't that then the, the problem when, for us women, when we are trying to, to save our bodies from certain issues that we, 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 we want to use barrier methods, but our partners don't want to use barrier methods. I'm sure you've dealt with couples that 
have come with these mm. issues? What's the usually pregnant? Usually, yes. Is it, and is mm. it safe to have sex during pregnancy? Like, is it of course, yes, it is. It's safe, unless there's a particular problem at the pregnancy, unless oh. the obstetrician says don't have sex. Okay, yes, but it but it's safe. Like you can yeah. go yeah. ahead. Mm. Right, so in the cases where the the one partner wants to use the barrier methods and the other partner is like, Mech, take it away. Then yeah, then you've got to experiment and find something which works. Right. Um, and maybe and make, make it work. <laughs> yes, and maybe make some compromises. Sometimes it's very difficult. There are couples where no one system works for them. Mm -hmm. um, that's not usual. Usually, can a woman be on more than one contraceptive at a time? Yes, and in fact, I think in Holland they recommend that ad sexually active adolescents go on the contraceptive pill and use condoms. Wow. And I think it's not a bad idea <laughs> because it's easy to forget a pill, especially when it's you're an adolescent. And um, condoms are going to protect you from STIs as mm. well as pregnancy. Mm. So speaking of, um, speaking of STIs, what are some of the measures that women can take to prevent them from getting STIs, ex excluding, okay, because on my head I'm just thinking the barrier methods, obviously, a condom. Yes, a barrier method is definitely helpful. Mm -hmm. And female condoms give not as much protection as male condoms, but they do give some protection. The problem with female condoms is they're mm -hmm. noisy. You need music in the background, otherwise yes. you've got this slurp, 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 <laughs> slurp, which is really off-putting. <laughs> like play some music if you're going to be using a condom. You don't want to <laughs> be... A female condom, yes. A female condom. Um, <laughs> and what are some of the common STIs amongst women? Okay. Well, some of them are fairly obvious, like gonorrhea is going to give you a discharge that is noticeable, mm -hmm. but chlamydia, which is at least as worrying, may not give any discharge. So there are some where you may not notice them. Um, Herpes, you know, will give you sores, mm -hmm. which you will notice. Yep, and feel. Yeah. Probably, yes. Uh, mm. Warts, you will notice. Um, and syphilis, you may not notice. But and are these treatable? Like, is, should well, I get any of these STIs? Would I be able to get treated from them so that I can enjoy, like, a healthy sex life? Syphilis can be treated, but you've got to identify it. Warts may be difficult to treat and they may come back. Mm -hmm. Herpes tends to come back. Um, chlamydia and gonorrhea, yes, you can treat those with antibiotics. Wow, so if you were to advise me, yes. if you were to advise me on a day-to-day uh, -day routine on how to take care of myself as a woman, mm -hmm. what would that advice be? Okay, well, I think you want to have some idea of the regularity of your periods. Some people mm -hmm. have very regular periods. Right. And some people don't. Some people's periods may come and go. Um, and you want to notice if you're feeling pain in the pelvis, in the vagina. Um, Am I checking myself like every month if I've got certain pains or? No, you just notice. You just notice. Yeah. Um, if you're getting bladder infection so that it's painful to pass urine, that mm -hmm. needs checking out. So that includes now me getting pap smears done? Pap smears is um, one of the ways of detecting pre-cancer of the cervix. And um, it's actually a very good way because it picks up Cancer of the cervix is a nasty cancer. Mm -hmm. It's the most common cancer amongst women in, in Africa. And it leads to a horrible death. Okay. And um, so anything that can detect cancer of the cervix before it becomes cancer is right. worth it. Right, and so in terms of the pep smear, if I suffer from endometriosis, I had to say it right. Okay. Endometriosis is, is a pep smear something possible for me to actually have? Yes. 
So, but endometriosis and cervical cancer or precancer are mm -hmm. two different things. Okay. So endometriosis is a condition where the endometrium, which is the lining of the uterus, starts growing in different places, mm -hmm. particularly on the ovaries and around the pelvis. And it generally causes quite a lot of pain. Um, it can also cause infertility. Um, so it's... Uh, yeah, it's a difficult condition. Uh, is there a treatment? Um, there are treatments, and the best one, well, there are hormonal ones, which basically switch your cycle off, mm -hmm. um, and that's quite successful for some women. And then you can have a laparoscopy where you actually identify each of the little spots mm. where the endometriosis is and do a very superficial burn on them, and that that's quite a difficult thing to do. I can't do it. I'm not the sort of gynecologist who can do that. I <laughs> can have colleagues who can do that. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, Doctor, I live, our time has like been cut off, but before we like totally close it off, how difficult was it for patients living with HIV and AIDS to get their medication because of COVID-19? Well, I know it was difficult. I can't give you figures. Mm. But I know that people had HIV positive, people had difficulty getting to clinics to pick up their supplies right. um, because of roadblocks. And also that the clinics didn't necessarily stock everything that they needed. Right. So yeah, that was a bit of a disaster. But we're fixing it, right? I think it's <laughs> well, the lockdown is getting better. So. It's getting better, so it will be fixed. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Eilif. That big was pleasure. Dr. Jeannie Eilif talking about women and their reproductive health, how to take care of yourself as a woman so you can have a better um, experience when it comes to sex, making sex more pleasurable. That was Dr. Jeannie Eilif giving us all the information about the female reproductive system and health so that you and I, as women you know can have a better sexual experience and a pleasurable one at that this is the naked truth show where we talk all things sex sexuality and health until next time stay away from sugar bye <laughs>